Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at CPA questions that deals with leases. Leases is a very important topic on the CPA exam. It's a major topic like pension, like the cash flow, like income tax, accounting for income taxes, governmental and consolidation, among other topics. But why leases is important and why do you have to be comfortable with leases before sitting on the exam? So here's how it works. When you sit down on the exam day and you are not sure, you, you thought, yeah, I may not get a lot of leases. Somebody told me that leases is not an important topic on the exam. Here's what's going to happen. This, the AI CPA software, they're going to throw at you a question about leases. And that question could be easy to medium. And how do they determine whether that question is easy or medium? Well, hundreds of thousands of students took the exam before and they answered that question. And let's assume 80% of the students get this question right and you got this question wrong and it's easy to medium question about leases what is this how is the software is going to react it's going to say this candidate he either answered that question incorrectly by mistake or this individual does not understand leases which is a major topic on the exam then they will give you a second question about leases you get it wrong they'll give you a third question about leases you get it wrong immediately you are heading to a grade below 75. The point I am trying to make here is you cannot take your chances on the CPA exam day. You have to be confident in all topics and leases is one of these major topics. Not only leases, any topic you want to be competent because they can detect your weakness. The software will detect your weakness and if they say you have weakness in major areas, you will fail the exam. So that's why I want to emphasize this point. But before I start, if you are, whether you are an accounting student, because this topic is covered in intermediate accounting or a CPA candidate, especially if you're a CPA candidate studying for the CPA exam, I strongly suggest you check out my website, farhatlectures.com. Now, you might have Becker, Roger, Wiley, Glime, good for you. I'm really happy for you. You need to have those courses. I don't replace them. What I do is I can be a useful addition to your CPA course. I can add 10 to 15 points to your score by helping you understand the material better. I don't sell you, I'm not, you know, air or snake oil. I sell you actual teaching knowledge. So I'm not selling you strategies or how to do things. I'm selling you the knowledge you need, the basic you need to do well on your CPA prep courses. And, and at the end of the day, do well on the CPA exam. And here's my offer to you. You are risking $30. So this is what you are risking. Invest $30. Try my system. You like it, keep it for the next month. If you don't like it, cancel. So your loss is $30. What is your potential gain? Your potential gain is passing the CPA exam. Are you willing to take that chance? That's up to you if you're studying for the CPA exam. Always, if not for anything, check out my website to determine how well is your university doing on the CPA exam on average? I have average score by university as well as section. If you are an accounting student, I have plenty of accounting courses and resources. Connect with me on LinkedIn and check out what other people, other people means successful candidate that they used my system along their CPA review course and they passed. Please like this recording and share it on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, anywhere you can share it. Connect with me on Instagram and Facebook. So let's take a look at the first question. And a question like this where you have a lot of data, I can ask you a lot of questions. So don't read the data first. See what you are being asked. You are being asked, what is the outstanding balance of the lease liability and extends June 30th balance sheet? Now, why do I ask you to read the question first? Because I can ask you 10 different MCQs about this question. So you want to know what you are looking for because you could be buried. You could be spending five minutes just to kind of go over the data. Now you are focusing. You, need, you want to know what's the lease liability. West Goshen Tech sells computer system. West Goshen leases computer to Exton Company on January 1st, 2021. The manufacturing cost of the computer is 19 million. So notice the manufacturing cost of the computer. It's not really any way relevant to me because I'm looking for Exton. So this is basically out like it just this way. You don't have to worry about this information because the cost of the manufacturer is not part of the question. This is a non cancelable lease has the following term. The lease payment. That's important. Three million two hundred. 87,947. It's semi-annual, twice a year. First payment, January 1st. Remaining payment on June and December, each year through June 30th, 2025. The lease term is five years, 10 semi-annual payment, no residual value, no purchase option. Economic life of the equipment is five years. 
implicit interest rate and let's see incremental borrowing rate nine percent fair value of the computer as of january 1st 23 million this is important okay so let's start with this so what are they asking us they want to know exton lease that equipment what is their lease liability as of june 30th 2021 and the dates here are extremely important just in any problem but especially with bonds and leases extremely important so you started the lease january the lease january first now you are not giving the present value factor to find the present value of the payment but you are giving the fair value of the computer we're going to be using the fair value of the computer simply put as of january 1st 2021 you have a lease liability you have a lease liability of 23 million and this is immediately january 1st also what happened immediately on january 1st you made your first payment you made your first payment what does that mean you made your first payment you are going to reduce your lease liability by the payment and you made a payment of three million two hundred eighty seven thousand nine forty seven now you want to know what is your balance right after this lease payment once again why am why am i doing this because you made the lease payment immediately therefore i have to reduce my i have to reduce my my balance okay so there is no interest involved in this payment so i i started with 23 million i made a payment of 3 million 287 thousand 947 and that's going to give me a balance of 19 million 19 million seven hundred twelve thousand and fifty three dollars and this is one of the answers but that's not what they're asking us if they ask you what is the balance as of january 1st 2021 that will be the answer but that's not the answer so i immediately i will take this one out immediately i take c out as well notice i went down to 50 50 i don't even do anything yet i know it's it's not going to be the paint it's not going to be the fair value of the equipment because i'm going to be making a payment later on so immediately you could have take out c Okay, it cannot be the balances of june 30th and right after my first payment you know my balance went down it cannot be d so now i'm down to 50 50. if i have to guess you can guess at this point but don't guess you can do this you can work this question real easily well what happened is this was january 1st now by june 30th you're going to be making another payment how much is the payment the payment is three million two hundred eighty seven nine forty seven the payment is fixed What's going to happen on that date when you make the payment, you are going to split the payment into two components. One component, <coughs> sorry, will be interest and one component will be the for the liability, for the principal. So one component is interest, the other one is for the principal or against the liability itself. Now, how do I know which one is the principal, which one is the liability? This is why I had to compute this balance first, the 19 million seven twelve fifty three. So that's my balance as of the beginning of this period. And the interest rate I am being charged is 9%. So that's going to give me interest component of 1774085 dollars So simply put, of this payment, the interest is $1,774,085. And the remaining must be the liability reduction, which is $1,513,000. Let me just... You do the computation here. So three million two hundred eighty seven nine forty seven. Three million two hundred eighty seven thousand nine hundred and forty seven dollars minus the interest component one million seven hundred seventy four thousand and eighty five dollars. What I'm left with is one million five hundred thirteen thousand eight hundred and 62 so this is gonna again so what's what's the entry simply put the entry it's going to be you debit the liability one million five hundred thirteen thousand eight sixty two you credit interest expense one million seven hundred seventy four thousand eighty five dollars and you credit cash for the amount three million two hundred eighty seven nine forty seven so now i'm going to be reducing my liability again by this amount one million five hundred thirteen thousand eight sixty two now this is the answer whatever i get here okay so all what i have to do is do this computation and after this computation the answer will be eighteen million eighteen million one hundred ninety eight thousand one ninety one
Okay, so that's basically how you do this. Remember, the payment is broken down into interest and into liability. First, you compute your interest. Then whatever's left is for the liability, for the principal amount. But this question, they could have asked me, what is my interest component? For example, they could have asked me, what is the interest component as of this date? It will be this amount. They could ask me, what is the balance as of December 31st after the second payment? Then you have to make a second payment. And what, they could ask me, what is the total interest expense for the year? You have to add up both interest expense. So they can ask you a lot of questions about a problem like this. Make sure you are comfortable with the lease topic. Let's take a look at this question. Let's keep the calculator. What is the effective annual interest rate? So they're giving us a problem and they're asking us what's the effective annual interest rate. Now you may not see something like this on the exam exactly like this, but you want to make sure you are comfortable with the lease schedule because from the, I mean, they could give you lease schedule. I'm sure they can, but I'm not sure they'll ask you what is the effective interest rate, but you want to make sure you understand how to compute this because if you know how to compute this, then you, you know how to compute interest expense. If you know how to compute interest expense, as we saw as we saw a minute ago, you know how to compute the principal. So it's very important to have a good understanding about everything. Refer to the following lease amortization schedule. The 10 payments that are made annually starting with the beginning of the lease. Title does not transfer to the lessee and there is no purchase option or guarantee residual value. The asset has expected life of 12 years. The lease is non-cancellable. What is the annual effective interest rate? That's what they want us to know. What is the effective annual interest rate? So how much am I being charged in interest? Well, how do I know this? Well. I am giving my cash payment. That's not really helpful because the ca remember the cash payment, the cash payment, the twelve thousand, the cash payment will be split between interest and the liability or the lease principal. So the first payment is made immediately. It all goes toward the principal. The second payment, twelve thousand here. Well, I notice that six thousand nine hundred and eleven dollars is interest, and five thousand eighty nine is principal or decreasing in the balance. What does that mean? Well, if I paid $6,911 over a balance of 69,108, all what I have to find out now is divide those two numbers, 6,911 divided by 69,108, and that's gonna give me my interest is around 10%, 10.00028, 10%. And this is my interest. So my interest for this problem is 10%. Why? Well, how, I have my interest expense. Well, if I paid that much interest expense on this balance, well, the interest, the, my interest cost is 10%, implicitly is 10%. Let's take a look at this question. What is the total effective interest paid over the lease, over the, the term of the lease? Basically the same thing, except a different question about this topic. Well, hold on a second. This is there's a lot of numbers. How do I know how much interest I paid? Well, let's start with my balance. What is my outstanding balance? I owe 75,939. That's my liability. Okay, that's good. Then of that liability, how much did I, did I actually pay? Well, I made 10 payments of 12,000. 12, so I made payments of 120,000. Those are my total payments. My balance is 75,000. 939 so the difference between those must be my must be my interest so immediately what you can do in this problem immediately you can eliminate the 120 you could eliminate the 75 so you're down to 50 50 and i don't even have to do i don't even have to use my calculator if i'm i'm subtracting 120 from 75 it cannot be 63 so my answer must be 44062 and that's my answer it's the difference between what i paid in total and what my loan balance is, what my loan balance is. So I paid 120,000, I owe 75,939 for the lease. The remaining must be in. Okay, let's take a look at this problem. What's the outstanding balance after payment nine? So this is payment nine and they're asking us what should be the balance after payment nine. Now, hopefully you know that after payment 10, the balance is zero. So the balance here is zero. This is easy if they, if they ask you this. But this is what they, they could do on the exam. On the exam, they can start by giving you this intimidated data and they ask you, what is the balance after payment 10? Okay? And if you don't know that the balance is zero after payment 10, then immediately the AI CPA software will say, this CPA candidate don't understand their leases. Well, what does that mean? It means you're heading toward a grade below 75. Let me let me give you this on a personal level example. If I gave you this question on the 
on my exam in my classroom and I told you what is my what's your balance after payment 10 and if you don't know that the balance is zero you should not pass my course not because I'm harsh because you don't understand leases and this is what happened on the exam day if they notice you don't understand this concept then forget about it you should not be a CPA as of yet what you should do sign up for hatlectures.com and this guy will help you pass right <laughs> of course so this is what that's what I'm saying you have to understand everything so what is the outstanding balance here in this right here in this uh, in this area so so what you, well what's the prior outstanding balance the prior outstanding balance is 17,125 then you made a payment of 10,000 well remember the payment part of it it's going to be interest part of it it's going to be principal so we if we can find the principal component we're going to take the principal component and deduct it from this prior balance and this will be our answer well we don't know what's the principal component can we find out the principal component of course we're going to take the outstanding balance multiplied by some interest rate to find out the interest component first to find the interest component here well I'm not giving the interest can I find the interest component I sure can it's 6091 if I take my one of my interest expense divided by the prior balance I will find out that I am being charged 11% well now it's easier 11% so I'm gonna take 0.11 times 17,125 and that's gonna be 1883 of interest 1883 let's make it 84 so of this $10,000 1884 is what is is uh, expense therefore if I take the difference between this and the remainder of the payment 8016 8016 is the principal now I, I find out what I need to find out I'm gonna take 8016 so and find the difference between that and the prior balance and the prior balance should be 17,125 and that's gonna give us a balance of 9,000 9,000 and nine dollars and the answer is this now if I made one more payment now my balance is nine thousand and nine dollars if I made one more payment if I made one more payment of seventeen thousand I'm sorry if I made one more payment now the balance is nine thousand nine hundred times eleven percent times point one one so my uh, my uh, my interest expense nine ninety my interest expense will be nine 90 for the payment 10 and my remaining balance from this this payment will be voila nine thousand nine dollars nine thousand nine dollars and the prior balance was nine thousand nine dollars and my remaining balance will be zero there we go so i showed you after year nine and after year 10 but you don't want to do year 10 you don't want to waste your time if they ask you what is year 10 is well say this is a two second question if they ask you what is the balance in year 10 it should be zero because the balance at the end of the life of the lease or the bond once you amortize everything the balance should be zero you pay that off okay the balance should be zero now again at the end of this recording i'm going to ask you to like this recording and i invite you again to check out my website farhatlectures.com again i'm going to give you this challenge are you willing to try to try my website for 30 dollars okay it's going to supplement your courses and i have lessons that goes with your courses to find out if you can get that extra 10 to 15 points to pass your exam so simply put the cpa exam will pay you dividend for years to come 20 30 40 years are you willing to try 30 dollars to find out whether you can get there that's that's all what i'm offering you anyhow good luck study hard and of course stay safe